I do want to zero in on decolonizing education because I think that's a subject that, you know, at present demands of us, you know, to forge forms of intellection that are adequate enough because, you know, there is often confusion and at times there are questions asked with bad faith as to what do you mean by decolonized education because people assume that, you know, you won't be able to provide an answer. And then they say, since you failed to provide me with a complete answer of what decolonized education is, I'm going to continue with, you know, with what exists at present. Now, we all know that there is no possibility of one person providing a whole blueprint of what decolonized education would mean. But we do know what it is. We know what is wrong with our education. Now, South Africa, like any other colonial society, in order for it to function, required an education system that will produce that discourse that I spoke of, that enables white people to think of themselves as superior. But you also, in order to perpetuate colonialism or in order to reproduce a colonial society, you needed more than the guns. You needed, you know, more than physical violence in order to subjugate the colonized. You needed an education system that would implant in the minds of the colonized a supposition that they are inferior and therefore it was right for them to be colonized because colonialism brought them into history, brought them into light. Now there is a discipline called architecture, you know. Now in architecture basically, you know, you do spatial planning, you draw, you draw plans, you know, that enable people to occupy space in a certain way and when you spatially plan, you do not just delimit space, but you also plan space in such a way that you facilitate certain kinds of interactions. There was something called apartheid spatial planning, meaning that architecture in South Africa was a colonial or was a discipline that was put to the service of colonialism. So if you look at South African cities, they were planned by architects, by spatial planners who deliberately planned them in such a way that these cities perpetuated colonial relations, far removed black people from white people, but also made interaction between black and white people in space impossible. Now, it means then that you can't continue with architecture in that way. You can't continue to teach architecture and practice spatial planning in South Africa in that way. But because we continue to have a colonial education system, you only have to look at how our cities post-apartheid or post-independence, post-1994 in South Africa have been planned. You will notice that spatial planning in South Africa and architecture continues to reproduce exactly the same, you know, apartheid spatial planning, the same colonial spatial planning. It is because the discipline is not decolonized. It is because the discipline continues to reproduce, you know, colonial relations. Why is it that we haven't planned our cities differently such that space is used in a way that facilitate interracial interactions? Why is it that we do not plan housing projects in such a way that they facilitate, you know, that interaction between black and white people? Why is it that we haven't planned our cities in such a way that that interaction on its own redistributes wealth. Because if you use spatial planning creatively and put poor people, you know, um, in the midst of rich people where services are functional, you know, where resources are available, it means that poor people would in time come to benefit, you know, from these better schools, you know, from better sewerage system, from better water provisioning that is reserved for rich people. But because you have a colonially derived discipline of architecture and spatial planning, we haven't done those things. So this must suggest that there is no discipline that is immune, you know, from this task of decolonization or from this, you know, call for decolonization because people in the sciences often tend to think that that's a subject for us in the social sciences. No, it is a subject also for the sciences. I'll try again one more time and illustrate one. If we rewrote the boundaries, you know, of the philosophy of science, and we said, for instance, in South Africa, that every medical doctor must be able to speak an indigenous language, 
Now imagine what would doctors learn from their black patients. They will learn that sickness for black people is not just a matter for bodily health. It's not just a matter for medical health. Sickness for black people represents something more than just the physical manifestation of ill health. Sickness is a manifestation of a disequilibrium between the living and the dead or the ancestors. It means that when we are sick, this on its own is an indication of a disequilibrium between you know, the, the physical world and the ancestral world, you know, or the metaphysical world. Now it would mean that as doctors cure you, you know, bodily, they would also inquire about your cultural health. Now these are things that medicine today is unable to, is unable, you know, to relate to. Because black people go to the doctors knowing fully well that, well, I will hopefully be cured, but in order for me to restore my full health, after I've been bodily cured, I would have to go and ask my ancestors, you know, um, for either forgiveness or I would go, have to go plead with them, you know, for something else. Now medical doctors, because they don't speak our languages, they can't access our cultural wealth, they can't know that health for us is medical health or bodily health plus social health and cultural health. All of these things constitute you know, a complex whole for us. You cannot be healthy in one way. You can't be healthy medically when you are not culturally healthy. You can't be healthy you know, medically when you are not socially healthy. Now for us, life is a totality. Life is not disagree, uh, you cannot disaggregate life into these components and think that, well, I can deal with your life medically. Life for us is a complex whole. So these are things that the philosophy of science, as it exists today, is unable to deal with. These are things that we need, you know, to make possible by rewriting, you know, the philosophy of, of, of science.